Hi, this is Betsy Foldis-Myman. I'm the producer of Connectipod, and we're so happy to congratulate the class of 2022. We have three graduates this year, Daniela Catalan and Angelica Benitez, otherwise known as Angie B, who have been with us forever, and also Carly Fawcett, who is our first remote intern from Louisville, Kentucky. So we're gonna take the next three episodes and give them the spotlight. And we're gonna start off with Carly. So we're talking with Carly Fawcett today. She was our intern who was head of social media. She graduated, what, Saturday? Yeah, this past Saturday. This past Saturday. How was, how was graduation? What was that like for you? Oh, it was, it was fun. I don't know why I'm like, I'm like blanking. It was only two days ago, <laughs> two, three days ago. It's all that le- um, the release of stress, right? <laughs> From school. Yeah. <laughs> I had so many graduation practices that it just felt like one of the graduation practices. <laughs> but I mean, it was emotional for me because um, my dad couldn't be there because he has COVID mm-hmm. right now. Oh, uh, yeah. That must have been so hard for your dad to not be there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was rough. Oh. So where did you graduate from? Oh, Assumption High School. It's a Catholic school in Louisville, Kentucky. You did a lot of APs and stuff like that, too. Like, you were like a crazy student, right? <laughs> like, a, like, like a crazy dedicated student, I, I remember. <laughs> that is one way to put it. Yeah, I did. I did a lot of the honor stuff. I didn't graduate with, like, distinction. You had to get a 4.0, like, every semester to do that. And I got one B in world history my junior year. And so I had a 3.98 GPA. So I didn't get the graduation (laughs) with honors, which is kind of funny. I'm not going to lie. But I'm a candidate for the AP capstone diploma. It's when you take AP seminar and AP research and then four other AP classes. I don't know if I talked to you about this, but I had like a research project this year where I wrote like a 4,000, 5,000 word paper wow. and a like 15 minute, 20 minute presentation and had to defend that like to a panel. And so that was like, that was the honors that I got to receive. Well, that's pretty intense. So what did you do your research project on? It was about the the correlation between the wealth of video game companies and the amount of LGBTQ representation in their games. And I found that like like as wealth increases, representation decreases. What? It was really interesting. Wow. That's really interesting. Yeah. You would think it would be the other way it around, It was cool. Right? Wow. And how did you come up with that subject? In the beginning of the year, like we had to brainstorm just things we were passionate about. And I knew I wanted to do something in the realm of video games because that's kind of my big passion. That's what I want to study later. And then I wanted to do some kind of social issue. And I mean, my brothers and I, we play a lot of video games together and we've noticed like blatantly homophobic things in the games that we play. And like we talk about it a lot. And so I just wanted to research that because there's also like nothing out there, hardly anything, any research in those realms. Like both of those areas are really understudied. So I wanted to like combine the two. So you want to study CS, computer science. Yes. Okay. So tell us a little bit about Western and what you're going to study. So I originally wanted to go out of state because out of state colleges have game design majors and there's like no um, Kentucky school that has uh, game design majors, but WKU has in-state tuition. So I had to go there. So I have to study computer science to like get in that realm of game design. And so they have like a certificate for game design that lasts like two years and you take a, a couple extra classes outside of computer science to get that but they don't have like a specific game design major and so I kind of have to like make it myself Mm -hmm. with the classes that I take I'm gonna get a kind of collaboration of those kinds of classes but also like the design aspect classes with the certificate for game design well that's so smart you're so smart (laughs) (laughs) thanks that's so awesome I'm I'm trying to make it interesting for me so I really want to try to get a balance of you know, artistic kind of classes. You're in Louisville, Kentucky, and Western is where? So it's like two and a half hours south of me. So not too far, but, you know, but not too close. It's a good balance. And your family's really tight, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's a family school because your Uncle Hank went there, too. Exactly. <laughs> With one yeah. of the really interesting uh, mascots, a blob, right? Isn't it a blob? Blob. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm so confused. Literally, no one knows what a hilltopper is. Like, I, like, I, 
it's so i've always loved the little blob guy i mean they <laughs> call him big red or whatever <laughs> he's a hilltopper but like what is a hilltopper <laughs> it's my favorite thing like they just brought um a yard sign yesterday to my house Aww. that says wku bound and it's got the little blob guy on it and that's like all <laughs> i could have asked for like i love it. i love it so much <laughs> Because you were so sheltered during the pandemic, does going out in crowds make you nervous? I'm definitely not ready. I've it's it's definitely been a lot adjusting. I mean, like I I am one of the only people who still wore a mask at school, and which feels weird that that's like a minority. Yeah. Like if people wearing masks, like I I don't know. It's just yeah, I'm definitely very overwhelmed by the idea of college and all those people and the dorms and the big classes and stuff. The pandemic has definitely taken a, a toll on my mental health. I can't like visualize it because I've never experienced anything like that. Yeah. So that idea, like not being able to visualize it overwhelms me like all the more. So, How big is yeah. Western? Like what's their population, student population? Like seventeen thousand. That's a big oh, difference because nice. you went, you went to a really small Catholic <laughs> school, right? Like, how many were in your graduating yeah. class? Oh, my class, like two hundred fifty. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I know everyone in my class, but that's not going to happen in college. Did you like going to Catholic school? No, <laughs> not really. Uh, I'll be honest. No, I mean there, there's a lot of like benefits to it. Like I definitely benefited from the small class sizes and like individualized learning. The assumption was a lot different than a lot of other schools in terms of like how tight knit the community is. Mm -hmm. I benefited from that, and I benefited from like the challenging curriculum. But there's definitely some downsides of Catholic school. It, it's a predominantly white predominantly like I wouldn't say predominantly wealthy but definitely a lot more like wealthy people that I would that I'm like surrounded by there's a lot of like conservative idealism you know I mean like I I saw a lot of homophobia transphobia racism ableism like all of that is just it's like commonplace so like like surrounded by that a lot it's not good but I mean, my friends, normally we all stuck together, people who kind of didn't fall in that norm, but it's definitely a different environment. And uh, it's a lot, uh, a lot stricter, I would also say. Mm. Definitely. I was not a fan of all of the dress codes. I know that's like at any school, really. But like, man, they are so like persistent about skirt length and stuff. I'm so <laughs> glad to not have to deal with that in college. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I could... There's a lot, definitely failures within the, the Catholic school system for their students. But uh, that's a whole, I could do a whole other podcast on that. <laughs> well, maybe we that. can if you'd like to. I could to. talk for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk for a while about that. We should schedule that in. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot to say yeah. about that. But yeah, no, I wouldn't consider myself very religious, but I've like learned a lot and I used to be so thanks. yeah okay that is a huge subject so we'll we'll save that for a, for a, for a different <laughs> podcast <laughs> yeah so your goals after college then are what I mean I really just want to be happy I'm gonna be honest with you I mean that's that's my main goal I want to do something that I enjoy most of all but like my my dream is to be able to make a video game or like contribute to some kind of game I feel like that would be really fulfilling like just very yeah. fun for me to do like yeah. Yeah. Video games get a lot of flack. I think like people don't consider it like they don't consider what it is. But think about what books were yeah. like. Think about the Gutenberg press. Right. <laughs> you know, think about like like right. that pushed everybody forward into literature that didn't have access to literature. And so you're in this creative world and you're interacting with it, which is amazing. And I think that your generation thinks in a completely different way because of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, that's that's a really cool way to describe it. I think. Like in terms of games, it can be largely inaccessible because a lot of like the technology and the games are just super expensive. Like there's a big like like gap in who can play games. Mm -hmm. But like there are also like like a lot of like free games and mobile games and stuff like that. It's getting a little better. But at the same time, like to play the newest games or to get the newest consoles, you have to be like rich because those things are expensive. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of that's definitely one of my goals in like in, when I do things is like making things accessible. I forgot to mention that. But that was oh, no, that's things. great. But go on. How are you going to pay for college? Uh, well, I am uh, privileged enough that my parents are going to pay for it. But I did 
I worked for some scholarships to kind of lessen that. Like I, I have academic merit scholarships and like what we call keys money with like like Kentucky education. I don't remember what it stands for, but over your years, like if you get certain grades, the Kentucky will pay for a certain amount, like besides in state oh, nice. tuition, like so that kind of thing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking at doing work study but I have to figure out if I'm eligible and that kind of stuff. But yeah, to help pay for it. So you, so, but you were very strategic in what you chose too, though, because you chose an in-state school. You chose one where you could mm-hmm. get those scholarships. So you brought that price down so that your family could pay for it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Smart. So smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So your generation is starting out with a lot of challenges. So what do you see as the biggest ones? I feel like... I got to mention climate change, definitely a huge issue that we're going to have to deal with. There's a lot that could be said there, but I just know it's just getting worse. And that's kind of been thinking about that a lot. I think another yeah. another thing is like jobs, employment kind of thing, because the minimum wage has just not increased. I definitely think one of the biggest is mental health. It's just been like a mental health epidemic for Gen Z. I don't yeah. know if epidemic's the right word. The rates of like mental illness are just so high with my generation. It makes sense. All the stuff that yeah. we've had to deal with just in our, our like early lives. It's not surprising that there's a lot of mental health challenges for you guys, but I think that you're handling it admirably well. I mean, I don't know if I like have any friends who don't struggle with mental illness and, and mental health stuff. Like definitely can, cons- I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm starting therapy soon, which is good. And I think everybody should go to therapy, especially yeah. in like my generation. Like it's a great it's a great thing and it should be easily accessible. If it's like everybody I know, then I know it's got to be a whole bunch of people. It's it's definitely not just in my circle. Like it's it's everywhere. We had we have like a guidance counselor for my whole class and so like everyone was required to meet with her like a certain amount of times mm-hmm. a year. People are using it more because I mean they need it more and it's there's less of a stigma around going to therapy and guidance services now yeah I think it's that's getting better but yeah definitely it's definitely a major concern yeah my generation what advice would you give to next year's high school graduating class definitely the biggest thing that I've learned that I have said to like my underclassmen friends is to prioritize yourself over your grades because and that that applies to like a very specific population like people who take like who who are like encouraged to always take like advanced classes and that kind of stuff and I I cannot believe I have to say it but like I just regret putting schoolwork over a lot of different aspects of my life over the past four years like I stress myself out way too much Mm -hmm. to get to get all these things and to get good grades and stuff when I should have been prioritizing like my health mental physical or like socializing hanging out with friends that kind of thing like I I regret not doing that as much as making sure I get all A's and stuff like that it's not that important Mm. because you're you know it'll be fine either way so that that's definitely my main thing is to prioritize yourself and why did you come to that conclusion do you think I don't know it was like after I had finished everything, like after I had turned in my AP research paper and I could finally like coast through the last couple of weeks of my senior year, it was like, like I realized that like my, my grades didn't really, um, it didn't really make a difference in where I ended up. Like a lot of people say like, oh, you won't get into this college if you don't do that. But like, I, you know, I would have gone to WKU either way. I would have studied the same thing, you know, I Mm -hmm. I don't, I didn't have to take things that I didn't want to take. Like I wanted to take AP research. There are obviously some things that like I enjoyed and I like wanted to challenge myself in terms of, but like sometimes I would just refuse to let myself slack sometimes, sometimes. And I realized that like, I probably would have been better off mentally and my mindset would have been better off if I had just prioritized myself instead of yeah. making sure I did everything perfectly. Cause that's just not, it's not important as, I mean, like it's, it's important to an extent to not just slack off the whole time, but like, you know, letting myself breathe. Yeah. You know, I could definitely could have benefited from that. It's really great to hear you say this going into college, because I think you're positioned to just kill it, <laughs> you know? Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Okay. And your last question is, what what advice would you like from students in college now to give to you? If 
college students have really had to deal with like loneliness, that kind of thing. Like I want advice on like how to deal with that. I feel like as someone who is very like relationship centered, like someone who really is close with family and friends, I feel like I'm going to be dealing with that. And I've heard a lot about college students dealing with that, especially in their first year. So I guess advice on how to deal with like loneliness, like being alone when you don't want to be alone. I'm going to have to face that in life regardless. But I think that's kind of like my main concern, what I'd love to hear more about. Hmm. Okay. So any college students listening? We'll get that advice for you. <laughs> oh, Carly. Oh, thanks. It's been be nice. so good talking to you and to see you. And thank you so much for all of the work that you did for Connectapod and, you know, for for stepping up and doing our social media and helping us to figure out some of the new apps that we had. And you did a really great job. Oh, thank you. No, thanks for, I mean, letting me be a part of it. Like that was just so much fun. I, I really enjoyed doing that. It, it was really, it was really awesome to be able to, to do that with you guys. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. We're kind of all figuring it out as we move along. So, you know, and that's what you're going to do this coming year. And I can't wait to see where you are a year from now. So we love oh, you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> love you too. Thanks, Carly. We're so happy for you and we're so proud of you. And Western Kentucky University, you are so lucky to get Carly Fawcett. We can't wait to see how Carly makes her mark on the video game industry. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon. <laughs>